In this video, we will look at how to deliver a knowledge lesson. You should always prepare a good lesson plan prior to instructing. It helps give you confidence by ensuring you remain on track and that you instruct in accordance with your lesson objective. You will use these skills throughout your career when fulfilling your role as a supervisor whenever you are called upon by virtue of your employment to instruct. In preparation for the lesson, the instructor must ensure his or her Blackboard or PowerPoint title slide is properly formatted with all the pertinent information. The instructor must also ensure the classroom is set up in a manner most conducive to the training being delivered. In a knowledge lesson, the layout represented here is generally considered to be an efficient setup. Instructors may modify the layout according to individual preferences or restrictive classroom design, provided the basic concept is followed. The instructor begins the class with the introduction. He or she should cover any safety precautions relevant to the class, review the previous lesson, and reinforce the material being taught by covering the where, what, and why. The instructor also goes over any test details pertaining to the information being taught and in accordance with the training plan. The instructor should then go over the number of stages the lesson will cover. The introduction is completed with a control statement giving the guidelines for questions and answers and any other relevant details to ensure the lesson is delivered with minimum disruption. Good morning, my name is Moss Corporal Rose. For the next 40 minute period, we will be learning CF rank structure EO10101 and it will be taught in accordance with the Canadian Forces Dress Instructions. Reference A-AD-265-00 slash AG Dash zero zero one. Why this is important is so that you can recognize ranks and know how to address non-commissioned members and officers in the Canadian Forces. Where you will use this is throughout your military career anytime you are addressing non-commissioned members or officers. This lesson is broken down into three stages. Stage one, Canadian Forces rank structure Stage 2, Marks of Respect. Stage 3, Forms of Address for Officers and Non-Commissioned Members. The contents of this lesson will be tested on the Military Knowledge Test and there will be a quiz at the end of this lesson. If you have any questions, raise your hand. And if I have any questions for you, I'll ask the question and then raise your hand and answer at that time. There will be no group answers for this lesson. The instructor now delivers the body of the lesson. Each teaching point for each stage must be clearly identified and introduced. The instructor must maintain class interest by using good voice control, shifting eye contact, and engaging each student. The instructor must make every effort to control personal gestures and mannerisms which students could find distracting and encourage participation throughout the lesson. The instructor must confirm each stage with both leading and direct questions using good questioning techniques to confirm the lesson is understood. Overall, an instructor must use visual aids correctly and use the strength of his or her personality to attract and maintain interest in the subject matter. Okay, in stage one we'll be looking at the CF rank structure. In this stage, we will look at non-commissioned members and the officer ranks. There are three elements within the Canadian Armed Forces. First, we have the Air Force. The epaulet is light blue. Next, we have the Army. The epaulet is green. And the Navy. The epaulet is dark blue color. There are two groups of rank insignia in the Canadian Forces. We have the non-commissioned members and the officers. Under the non-commissioned members, they are divided into three categories. First, we have junior ranks. 
Next, senior non-commissioned officers and warrant officers. Under the junior ranks, we have a private or ordinary seaman in the Navy and is a blank epaulet. Next, we have the private or able seaman in the Navy, which has one chevron on the epaulet. Next, we have corporal or leading seaman in the Navy, and we have two gold chevrons. And finally, the master corporal in the Army and Air Force and master seaman in the Navy, we have two chevrons and a maple leaf. Just a note, the chief of defense staff or such officer as he designates may appoint a corporal or leading seaman as a master corporal or a master seaman. Master corporals and master seamen have authority and powers uh, of command over all other corporals and leading seamen. So basically what that means is the master corporal is an appointment, is not a rank. Next, we'll look at the senior NCOs. First, we have the sergeant in the Air Force and Army and the petty officer second class in the Navy. We have three chevrons and a maple leaf. Next are the warrant officers. First, we have warrant officer in the Army and Air Force and petty officer first class in the Navy. It's a single crown as shown there. Next, we have the master warrant officer in the Army and Air Force and a chief petty officer, second class in the Navy. And it's a crown with a wreath. And finally, the chief warrant officer in the Army and Air Force and chief petty officer, first class in the Navy, as shown. We have three distinct rank badges that are worn by Chief Warrant Officers in the Canadian Armed Forces. The first one, we have the Canadian Forces Chief Warrant Officer. Next, we have the Sergeant Major of the Army, Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, and Chief Warrant Officer of the Air Force. And finally, the Senior Appointment Insignia. So we just looked at the non-commissioned member rank structure. Now we're going to move on to the officers. Officers are divided into four categories. First, we have subordinate officers, then junior officers, senior officers, and finally, general or flag officers. Under subordinate officers, we have the officer cadet in the Army and Air Force and the naval cadet in the Navy. It's a thin gold bar on the epaulet. Next, we have the junior officers. Second lieutenant in the Army and Air Force and acting sub-lieutenant in the Navy. We have a thick gold bar on the epaulet. Next, we have the lieutenant in the Army and Air Force and sub-lieutenant in the Navy. We have a thin gold bar and a thick gold bar. And finally, the captain in the Army and Air Force and a lieutenant in the Navy. We have two thick gold bars on the epaulet. Next, we have the senior officers. In the Army and Air Force, we have the major and the lieutenant commander in the Navy. One thick gold bar, one thin gold bar, and one thick gold bar. Next, we have the lieutenant colonel in the Army and Air Force. And in the Navy, we have the commander. It's 
three thick gold bars on the epaulet. And finally, the colonel in the Army and Air Force and a captain in the Navy. We have four thick gold bars. Next, we have the general officers or flag officers. First, the brigadier general in the Army and Air Force and the Commodore in the Navy. We have the crown, cross swords, and one maple leaf. Next, we have the Major General in the Army and Air Force and the Rear Admiral in the Navy. We have a crown, cross swords, and two maple leaves. Next, we have the Lieutenant General in the Army and Air Force and the Vice Admiral in the Navy. It's a crown, two cross swords, and three maple leaves. And finally, we have the General in the Army and Air Force and Admiral in the Navy. And it's a crown, cross swords, and four maple leaves. Okay, we've just covered the CF rank structures for non-commissioned members and officers. Are there any questions for stage one? Yes. Do you salute an officer cadet? That's a good question. No, you don't. However, we'll be covering that in more detail in the next stage. Okay, I have a couple questions for you. What's unique about Master Corporals? They have authority and power over all corporals and privates? Yes, they do. Anybody else? It's an appointment. It's not a rank. Exactly, and it's appointment. Good. What is the rank on the top left corner of the screen? Right here. Sergeant or Petty Officer, second class. Good. What is the rank on the center bottom? Captain or Lieutenant Navy. Captain or Good. Stage two, marks of respect. In this stage, we will look at the marks of respect and when to salute. The military salute is a traditional demonstration of I have a few questions for you. Would you salute an officer the same way in all three elements in the CF? Yes. Yes, you would. State the procedure for addressing a non-commissioned member. March forward two paces. Come to attention. State your name and your rank. Good. Once all the training information has been delivered and confirmed, the final summary is delivered by the instructor, restating the what portion of the introduction. The instructor may ask the students to review any notes they have taken, and at this point ask any questions from the class. All right, final summary. We've talked about the CF rank structure, marks of respect, and forms of address for officers and non-commissioned members. Are there any questions on anything I taught in this lesson today? If an end of lesson test is required, it is given at this point. The instructor will give all the instructions pertaining to the test and administer the test in accordance with the training plan criteria. The instructor must be sure to correct the test and inform the students of the results. All right, so we're now going to carry out the final test. Take out a piece of paper and a pen. I'll put the uh, questions on the screen. You have five minutes to complete the test. Question one, what is the Navy equivalent of an Air Force captain? Question two, do you address a superior NCM the same way in all three elements of the Canadian Forces? Question three, 
What is the Navy equivalent of a chief warrant officer? And question four, how would you address a female officer? The conclusion of the lesson summarizes the main points. Also, the instructor identifies the areas that require further study or improvement based on the test results and his or her observation of the class as a whole. The instructor then repeats the why statement from the introduction to re-motivate the trainees. Finally, the instructor distributes any handouts or reading materials pertaining to the lesson and gives clear details as to the time, location, and subject of the next class the students will be attending. In conclusion, remember that the Army and the Air Force use the same rank structure and the Navy use their own. Also, we pay compliments to officers as a formal mark of respect and courtesy. You have been good students and you are now able to recognize ranks in the Canadian Forces, and you know how to address non-commissioned members and officers. Make sure that from now on you follow these forms of address. Your next class is with Master Corporal Jones on the CF Drug and Alcohol Policy, back here in the class at 1300.